because you've done so much research in this space, what what area of health um, seems to need the most amount of work based on all the research that you've done? Um, so there's two things. One, we talked about environmental health, just this awareness. People need to know that the environment is making them sick and we are not designed for it. And start to learn about mold and mycotoxins and chemicals and pesticides and glyphosate and all this stuff. And the rabbit hole will open up and you'll be blown away in terms of what threats are actually out there in your water, in your food, in your grass, everywhere, right? So that's a big one. The second one is I didn't know how broken female healthcare is until I started working with female health patients. So this idea of clinical research is done on men because women have a menstrual cycle and that disrupts the science, hmm. right? So literally clinical research is like, well, yeah, we'll include women, but postmenopausal women because they don't have a cycle that screws up our product. And then all of a sudden products don't work for half the population. Well, not half because some women are postmenopausal, right? But for a big, big chunk. And so we see over and over and over again, anxiety got 80% of dementia and Alzheimer's in women. Why? Right. Women 66% of them will die on their first cardiovascular event with zero previous warning sign or symptom. They didn't even know they were sick. It's a tiny fraction for men. Why? What percentage of women would die? We say that again. 66. 66. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's, it's a much bigger problem. Every health problem is worse for women. We're seeing even mood and behavior issues because the hormone profile is different. And because there is a circadian rhythm of the cycle and your hormones your follicular phase versus your luteal phase look entirely different. You're truly different people inside, right? So if you're if that's not being accounted for and you're trying to solve a problem in a male-centric research medical model, yeah, then you're going to feel horrible for sure. And so what we've learned is that we, we put a major priority then of our research unraveling the hormone cascade and being able to use genetics to understand exactly who am I hormonally and where do I need to focus? Is it that I make too much estrogen or not enough? Is I make too much testosterone or not enough? Do I make a toxic estrogen metabolite, which fuels things like breast cancer and ovarian cancer, you know, and, and the dementia and the cardiovascular we talked about. And if that's the case, what I do about it, is it about detox or slowing down the estrogen metabolism? There's different things you can do to fix it. So that area, not only is it the most broken, but it's the biggest impact because it's so broken, the Delta value between where it's at and where it could be. And when we work with women on their fibromyalgia, endometriosis, bad menstrual cycle, how quickly they feel relief and change because we're actually now fixing the right problem as opposed to masking the symptom. It's really been empowering for us. And like, uh, if you look at our database, it's like 75% women now, Wow. You know, uh, because that, problem is just so prolific and needs so much support. And because we've paid attention to the genetics of the hormone cycle, the support is now there. 